Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, wherever you might be watching this, whenever you might be watching this. I am Mr. Kennedy. I am the instructor for your U.S. History 2 class that will be completely online this semester. Um, I wanted to take a minute, as I said in the email, to kind of just do a, a quick video and give you an idea of what you've gotten yourself into. That way, if you have any questions, you can email me right away and I can take care of that. Uh, so let me just click on our Blackboard class, and I'm going to give you a really quick tour. Uh, here you see homepage, syllabus, lessons, messages, and my grades. Those are going to be the most important things to you. And the very first thing I'm going to click on is syllabus, because that's kind of where the contract is between you and I, so you have an idea. Um, <clears throat> You got your course agreement form, that's required by everybody. If you don't do the course agreement form, then you don't get to see the lessons. The online syllabus is there for you to take a look at. There's also a syllabus addendum for COVID-19. Uh, there's my information, so you can reach me easily, and then course schedule. Now this History 2112 online syllabus, here it is. We meet completely online. I'm sure you know that. Um, my email address is jason.kennedy at westgatech.edu. I'll answer any emails Monday through Thursday up until 10 p.m. for sure. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I do still check my email. It's just not quite as often. So you can still email me on a weekend. Just I might be doing something out and about. So it, it'll take a little longer for me to get an email back. If you are going to be around the Carroll campus, I do have an office here. Uh, 306E is my office location. My phone number is 770-836-6867. You can leave a voicemail and I can check it when I'm in my office or um, the voicemail will be forwarded to me in the form of an email, so I'll get it either way. If you are in Noonan on Tuesdays, I do have an office in Noonan. It's uh, Office B124. It says 2 to 3.30. Those are my public office hours. But if you come to, to Noonan anywhere between 11 and 12.30, I can see you then. But I've got a 12.30 to 1.45 class. And then 2 to 3.30, I'm available also. Uh, for Carrollton, Wednesdays from 10 to 2, I should be in my office. And then, of course, there's the email option as well. The textbook for this course is completely free. If somebody told you you had to buy a textbook, just tell them they're wrong. Uh, this is a link. This blue link right here will go to the textbook. It's called the American Yop. It's put together by Stanford University Press. And it's actually a pretty good textbook as far as textbooks go. I mean, it's still boring like a textbook, but it's less boring. Let's, let's put it that way. Scrolling down a little bit further, uh, course attendance. There is a course attendance requirement. You are graded on your attendance and your attendance is 5% of your grade. Now you might be asking, how are you graded on attendance if I never see you? It's real simple. Just participate online. If you do a discussion board or a, a quiz for a week, then you get credit for that week. So just make sure that you're doing something each week, preferably all your work, of course, because I want everybody to get an A. I have a section here on plagiarism. That's because plagiarism is kind of a big deal when it comes to history. Uh, to make a long story short, make sure that all of your work is your own. Make sure that all of your work is original. Uh, there have been famous historians that have completely lost their careers because they plagiarized. Uh, we do know if you've plagiarized, we have ways to find that out. Uh, just the real simple thing is don't do it. You may not like history. You may not be good at history, but I will give you credit if you try on your own and you do your own work. Now, what happens if you are caught plagiarizing or cheating? Well, it's a zero on whatever assignment that is. And if you do it more than once, then... I'm, I have to submit your name to the Dean of Students for further um, research and potential discipline. So the really easy answer is just do your own work. It's, it's easier sometimes to write something than it is to look things up, I promise. 
For grading, uh, there are two exams. There's a midterm exam, a final exam. There are four short little page and a half papers you have to do that are opinion based that I call reflection papers. There is a museum review where you have to watch either a historical film or look at a website. Activities, those are your discussions and your quizzes you'll have to do. The SLO essay is a research essay. Everybody taking history has to do the research essay. And then participation, that is your attendance. That is you just completing your work. Now the exams, once again, two exams. They're not cumulative. So the first half is the first test. Second half of the class is the second test. For your reflection papers, there are four of them. Each one is worth 5%. Five times four is where we get the 20. And there are readings in each of the lessons folders that you have to do. The reflection papers are based on those readings. And I mean it when I say that they are opinion. You're going to read the article. You're going to choose one of the articles throughout the semester. You're going to just give me a one page summary. Hey, I'm reading this and here's what it's about. And then you're going to tell me how you felt when you read the article. Did you like it? Did you hate it? Do you hate me for making you read it? Did you learn something? Whatever it might be. And as it says, the best reflection papers are one and a half to two pages in length. They provide a clear opinion or idea and is convincing as to why you feel as you do. Um, make me understand your position. Make me understand your point of view. And if you're somebody that says, hey, I don't have an opinion, uh, you do. What's your favorite color? What's your favorite food? Where's your favorite place to go? Those are all opinions. Now, you may also be curious, why am I asking you to do that? And it's because I want you to think for yourself. I want you to be able to come up with your own thoughts. I want you to be able to come up with your own ideas. The more you can do that, the more comfortable you are doing that, the more productive you can be you know, in the real world when you get a job or if you decide to go get a four-year degree. For the museum exhibit review, it says students are expected to visit one of the listed virtual museums or watch one of the listed historical movies located within the museum review folder. Uh, it's kind of a two-part thing. Half of it is a reflection paper. I love this movie. I hated this website. Why did you make me do this? I don't want to do this anymore. Or it could be, I love this movie. This movie is the greatest. Please make me watch more movies. But then the second half of it, you have to think kind of like a historian. You have to be a little more serious. You have to you know, consider, hey, this website makes sense. They explain what I'm looking at or I'm clueless and I'm lost and this is the worst website I've ever seen. But I have there eight different questions you can consider. You're not limited to those eight questions. You can think of new ones. Those eight questions are there just to kind of guide you and give you some ideas. Activities, that's completing the assigned materials. That's, you know, watching the videos. That's making sure that you have caught up and you've done all your work. For the SLO essay, it says uh, you must complete a five to seven page essay that explains why the events of 1968 are considered a turning point in American history. Now, it sounds really open ended, and that's kind of by design because I want you to research and explore what happened in the year 1968 and why it's so important. I can think off the top of my head about six or seven different life changing events that happened in that year alone. And Historians say that is the closest that America has come to a revolution since the revolution, although recent news events could change your opinion on that. But in either way, 1968 is a very, very, very important year for American history, and I want you to research and learn more about it. Now, I'll talk more about the essay as we get closer to it, so don't worry too much about it right now. Participation, once again, that is your attendance. And then extra credit, yes, I do have extra credit. Everybody has to do the one museum review. If you do an additional museum review, you get two points added to your grade. Now the course schedule, I have tried to make this as simple and easy as I can for you. There's a 
column that tells you what lesson we're on. There's a column that tells you what textbook chapter to read. Then I give you what topic we're learning, what assignments are due, and then the due date for them. Now, I know it might sound weird, but I'm having all of your stuff due on Tuesday, and I'm going to be posting all my video lectures on Tuesday. And you're curious why, it's because my other four classes all meet on Tuesday. So I'm being a little vain and selfish and just making everything due on the same day. So um, I apologize if that affects you any, but I, I'm sorry. I've got like 300 students, so I have to do something to keep my sanity. Um, but you can see here for week one, which will be Tuesday the 12th through Monday the 18th, that's considered week one. Uh, we're going to talk about capital and labor. This is the period right after the Civil War. You have to do a student introduction. Then you'll have one discussion and one quiz that you have to do. And all of that work is due by 11.59 p.m. on the 18th of the month. And just scrolling down, I've set it up so it's real easy. So week two, you can see what's due. Week three, you can see what's due. And notice week three also has your first reflection paper. The midterm exam is going to be the week of the 9th of March, and it does have to be proctored. So you'll have to come to a West Georgia Tech library. Uh, we'll talk about, about that more when we get closer, but you can go to any of our library locations, whether it's Douglasville, um, the Murphy campus in Waco, or the LaGrange campus, wherever it might be. So uh, you'll have that week to do the midterm. Spring break, of course, is in there, and then your final exam will be the week of the 4th. I think I can give you the 4th, which is a Tuesday, all the way through the next Monday um, to do your final exam. Now, what about Blackboard itself? I showed you the syllabus, which is what we just went over. And the course schedule, by the way, that's the exact same thing that's on the syllabus. I just gave it to you in a second place to make it easy for you to find. That way you have not one, but two ways to keep track of what is due each week. But underneath the syllabus, you'll see it says COVID-19 addendum. This doesn't really affect you as much unless you're taking an online course in addition to a face-to-face -face course. What this COVID-19 syllabus addendum says basically is don't come to campus if you feel sick, keep a face mask on if you're on campus, wash your hands regularly. Uh, even if you are only doing online courses, if you do suspect you have COVID-19 or if you get tested for COVID-19, let this email address right here know, covid at westgatech.edu. Uh, you won't be singled out or pointed out or anything like that. It's simply for reporting purposes. And they can also give you feedback and they can give you advice as well. So if you suspect you have COVID-19 or if you are, are diagnosed with COVID-19, go ahead and give that email address um, a message so that way they can keep track of everything. Also let me know so that way if you're if you need some help with your homework or something like that, if you're if you're in bed sick because of COVID-19, I can try to work with you a little bit if I know in advance that you have an issue. The faculty contact information, if you've never clicked on one of these before, it just gives you my information, my contact info and where my office hours are. I'm going to click lessons now. That way you have an idea of what lessons looks like. Um, American Yop, this is the textbook. Let me click on this and open it for you. Uh, as I said, it's done by Stanford University Press, and it's the same textbook we use for both U.S. History 1 and U.S. History 2. Since we are U.S. History 2, we use the right-hand column. Each one of these is a chapter. So maybe you want to read the chapter on World War II. Just click where it says World War II. And it will give you the textbook with all of the stuff that you want to read. 
Your reflection paper drop boxes are here. Uh, I'm only going to have one reflection paper drop box open at a time. That way you don't accidentally submit something to the wrong drop box. But you can see here very easily what the due dates are without having to go through the syllabus and figure it out. Now you will only have this one reflection paper drop box open and when that one closes the next one will open on February 2nd. So I have it set so there's only one at a time. Now I'm sure some of you are saying, but I want to work ahead. Uh, I apologize, but once again, I have to keep my sanity. And if I let people work too far ahead, then I have to, way too much stuff to grade. So I apologize uh, if you are somebody who likes to work ahead. Um, it's just not possible with the number of students I have and the number of places I have to go to teach. So. Um, Museum Review Dropbox, this is due on the 5th of April. And you can submit this at any time. So the minute you watch this video, if you're like, hey, I just want to get that out of the way, you can click on this Museum Review Dropbox. You could find the movie of your choice, or you could go to the website of your choice, and you could sit there for an hour and two and watch your movie or look at your website and you could write your museum review right now. Uh, it is better, and I sincerely mean this, it is better to get the museum review out of the way early because the more classes you have, the later in the semester we get, the harder the work gets and the less time that you have to spend on schoolwork. So just, if you take any advice from me, go ahead and just get your museum review done and out of the way, and then you don't have to worry about it. Don't procrastinate. Don't wait till the last minute to do your museum review. Below that is the SLO drop box. This is where your SLO will be turned in. I don't have too much in there right now simply because I don't want you to worry about it right now. We will get to that when we get closer to February and then you'll have a couple of months to work on it. All right, so each of these lesson folders, let me get rid of this real quick. I don't need that anymore. Each of these lesson folders look the same. So <clears throat> when you click on lesson one, the first thing you'll see at the very top, this is a link to the individual chapter of the book. So if I click American Yacht chapter 16, it brings me to chapter 16. So I try to make it really easy for you to get through the book. I've done each chapter like that. The different terms you need to know from the chapter are right here. So in chapter 16, it talks about the Pullman strike. It talks about a guy named Eugene V. Debs, who's very important in American history. Uh, it talks about the Great Railroad Strike of 1877. All of that is going to be in chapter 16. There's your student introduction you have to do. And I need to edit a little bit here. Um, then you have a PowerPoint. This is a PowerPoint that I have made. I'll just kind of click on it so you can see what it looks like. Uh, they are PowerPoint, PowerPoint uh, files. And these are files I have made. Now there's a lot of information in here but it doesn't tell you everything. So in addition to these these PowerPoints that are in here, I'm going to upload and create lecture videos for you. And the lecture videos are going to be in Blackboard no later than Tuesday by 3 p.m. That way you can put together what I have to say with these notes and you get a complete picture of what's going on. Uh, I have no way to know if you have watched these until we get to the, to the quizzes and until we get to the, the tests. So I'm going on in the honor system. My videos will probably take 20, 30 minutes at the most. So I just ask that you watch them somewhere throughout the day or throughout the week. There may be an occasional pop quiz based on something in the videos. And you won't know if there's a pop quiz unless I say in my video, hey, there's a pop quiz this week. So that's why I ask that you watch these um, the videos that I'm going to create so that you can keep up with the information. You can see if there's a pop quiz or something like that, and you understand better this material that I have given to you in the PowerPoint files. Videos. 
I do have a video in each folder. I like the crash course videos. They're very short. They're very dense. They're very fast paced to keep your, your attention. And I encourage you to watch, watch these crash course videos each week because they're pretty good actually. The guy who does them, if you don't know, his name is John Green. He is a world-class author. He's a motivational speaker. He does all of this great stuff and he's put together U.S. history in these 10 minute to 15 minute videos just so that you can understand what's going on. Readings. These are primary source documents that are used for two purposes. Well, three purposes really. Number one, to inform you so you better understand what what's going on at this point in American history. Uh, second thing that they're used for is for your reflection papers. So your first reflection paper, you can use any one of these documents from the first, I think it's three lessons. And if there's one of the documents in those first three lessons that you're like, hey, this is pretty cool. Uh, you could write about that as your reflection paper. The third thing it's used for, these readings make up the discussion questions. So when you read the Pullman labor strike, when you read or like you can listen to the cross of gold speech, either one, um, in your discussion, there will be a question about the Pullman labor strike. There will be a question about the cross of gold speech. For example, for the Pullman labor strike, I've asked you a question, um, you know, which of the news articles do you think was pro worker? Which of the news articles do you think was pro business and what, why do you feel that way? So those, that's the type of questions I'm going to ask you when it comes to your discussion questions. In fact, there you go, chapter 16 discussion. I'll give you a quick preview. Um, pre, please read the Pullman strike reading, which of the newspapers represented the workers, which one represented the owners. Uh, listen to and read uh, William Jennings Bryan's Cross of Gold speech. What was Brian's political position and what issues was he campaigning for? So those are the type of questions that you'll have to answer with those discussion questions. And it's all based on these primary source readings. The quiz is based on the book. So you read the, the chapter of the book and then you'll have a couple of questions to answer based on the book reading. And the discussion and the quiz together, that what, that's what makes up your daily activities. Lesson two looks the same. There's chapter 17, your terms to know. The PowerPoint that I have made, there will be a video put up here with my musings and my information for you. So you better understand the PowerPoint. There's your crash, crash course video. Here are your primary source readings, and these are some of the best ones of the semester. I'll just give you a preview of that as well. You'll have a discussion question to answer based on the readings. You'll have a quiz to answer based on the textbook. And that is how this class works week after week after week. Now, since we're not in person, since we are completely online, I know that this may be a little bit more difficult. Um, it may be a little bit more directionless, if you will. So I want you to know that you can email me any question. I will do my best to answer it as quickly as I can. I mean, you can even try to answer me questions about biology if you want to. I may not be able to answer those, but you know, I'll at least try. Uh, but most importantly, I want you to know that I'm here to help you in any way that I can. So um, if there's Anything that you need to know after looking through the syllabus yourself, after looking through the Blackboard course, just send that email. I'll answer as quickly as I can. I look forward to a good semester. Hopefully somewhere along the way, I'll get to meet some of you in person. But if not, I'm just an email away or a phone call away. Um, taking up enough of your time, about 25 minutes. I don't want to keep you any longer because you're going to have a second video to watch here in just a little bit. So um, we will talk to you soon and take care. Bye-bye.